Heavenly Father, we thank you this Sabbath day that you have given for us to come as a memorial of all that you have done, Lord God. We come into the Sabbath school, Lord God, asking that you will open our hearts, Father God, to receive. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see, Lord, that we may understand what you're doing in these closing hours, Lord God, of life's history as, as you have spoken through your word. May you hide me behind you, Lord God, that the message may come through, that it's all of you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. We are on page 15 of our Sabbath School lesson book of this lesson study, The Falling Away. And we have gotten to uh, number 14, what was the most widely prevalent heathen worship. Uh, we have finished, I'm sorry, on uh, number 13. And we're coming to number 14. Coming to 14. Question number 14 on the lesson study of the falling away. Yes, we, uh, you, in fact, you read 13 last Saturday. We can go back there and, and uh, start from there. Okay. To what did this lead? And let's see, I'll go actually from verse 11 so we can get a whole view. Why was the mystery of iniquity not fully revealed in the Apostle day? And we read verse 7 of, that was 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. And camera reader, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only you who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. We saw that, and we read uh, some answers to that. And uh, in what was shown the first evidence of falling away? It was number 12. And looking at 2 Thessalonians 2, Seven. Just read it. Mm -hmm. Verse seven. What was the evidence? Second, second Thessalonians. It's two seven. Yes, sir, that we just read. What would be the evidence? For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who, only he who knows now let it, let it will let. What was the evidence? And what was shown the first evidence of falling away? In, in light of what we said, why was the mystery of iniquity not fully revealed in the Apostle Day, verse 7? We read that. And what was shown the first evidence of falling away? And the answer is here, falling Mm -hmm. The mystery of iniquity doth already work, as Paul had stated. That man of sin, as we see in Second Thessalonians, and he following the man instead of Christ. Yeah, that's what verse thirty says in Acts twenty. Mm -hmm. It says, "Also your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after themselves." Okay. Just a quick comment. That means inside the church as much. Okay, you speak a little loud. That means inside the church as much as, uh, as outside, if not even more. Because mm -hmm. there are men inside the church drawing uh, away men to themselves, speaking perverse things. Mm -hmm. 
speaking perverse things. Okay. And 13, to what did this lead? And the answer, we see it in the, on the uh, Sabbath school quarterly. What did this lead to? As we go forward here to question number 14. Just, just, just a recap as we're going over. Following paganism. paganism. Yes, on page number, the answer is right there. Following men instead of Christ led to the adoption of heathen paganism, ceremonies and customs advocated by so-called philosophers and wise men. Paganism. Mm -hmm. Says Moshan, there is good reason to suppose that Christian bishops multiplied sacred rites for the sake of rendering the Jews and the pagans more friendly to them. The half converted, converted pagans were allowed at the sepulchres of the martyrs on their feast days to dance, to use sports, to indulge conviviality, and to do all the things that the worshipers of idols were accustomed to do in their temples on fest festival days. The Christians not only applied the terms used in the pagan mysteries to Christian institutions, particularly baptism and the Lord's Supper, but they gradually introduced all the pagan rites which were designated by those terms. In large part, therefore, the Christian observances and institutions, even in this century, had the aspect of the pagan mysteries. Mm. Very true, very true. <coughs> which, as we're going to start, um, let's turn over to Daniel 11 and look at verses 38 and 39. Daniel 11, verses 38 and 39. As we're starting over here in what was the most widely prevalent heathen worship. And we're going to go from that to Revelations 2, verses 4, 13, 13 through 15. But we're going to start here and look at because these are the times we're living in. Can I have a reader for Daniel 11? 30, uh, verse 38 and 39. But in his estate shall he honor the God of force, and a God whom his father knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strong hold with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. Now, let's look at that as we're looking at and our question in the Sabbath school quarterly here, what was the most widely prevalent heathen worship? And the answer in there is sun worship. The oldest, most widespread, and most enduring of all the forms of idolatry known to man. I have something I want to share with you here out of understanding Daniel and Revelations. This word here says, to understand this verse, we need to look at the Hebrew word, God of forces. In this verse, can also mean goddess of forces. Here you see, it, it, there's a picture in here of Dianus, a many-breasted goddess. And they serve many gods. But this representation that's here is showing that She's called goddess of fortress. This went back in time to the first goddess of Samarimus, the wife of Nimrod, who first built a city with a wall around it to protect it. The goddess Cybel is also depicted this way. It was the city of Ephesus that was especially attached to worshiping Diana. And it was at the Council of Ephesus that Roman Church decided to declare Mary the mother of God and queen of heaven. 
the early Roman church needed to bring a, in a mother and child symbol into the church as the sun worshipers loved their goddess of fortresses and her child, the sun god Apollo. So they changed the name to Mary, mother of Jesus. They created a new god whom his fathers knew not and honored her with riches and so on and so on. So we see here where this started and crept in. Then we're going to go here and uh, turn to Revelations 2. Revelations 2, verse 4. Can I have a read, please? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Okay. I have a reader for 13 in the same chapter, Revelation 2 13. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. And 14 on the 15. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there, hast there them that hold the doctrines of Balaam, who taught Balaam to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Mm -hmm. See. Mm -hmm. So God said that they had left their first love, the creator of heaven and earth, to worship pagan idols and turning from God. And these things that I read earlier in understanding Daniel Revelation, this is a Babylonian custom of sun worship, which has crept in from Nimrod to Samarimus and Tammuz, the sun, to create this threefold alliance that they have. Dragon the beast and the false prophet, this is the same. So they have some worship. And if you go to the Vatican, that's what you will see. Sun replic replicated the, the worship of the sun within that basilica, basilica. We have here, um, let's turn to Revelations 2.20. Revelations 2.20. Have a reader. I'll read that. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, committing commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And. Um, let's turn here also. Can I have a uh, turn to Numbers 24, 14? We're, gonna look, we're looking at this turning to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which is a form of Gnosticism. And Gnosticism is just a teaching of philosophy instead of God's word. And that was the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Numbers 24, four, verse 14 and also Balaam. So we're going to look at this, how this has crept into the church. Numbers 24. Numbers 24, 4, 15. And now, behold, I go unto my people. Come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. Okay. Let's, and now let's, so let's turn to Numbers 31, verse 8. Verse 8. 
Yes. And they slew the kings of Midian, the, the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Levi and Rechem and Zerah and Hur and Rebeth, five kings of Midian, Balaam also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. Okay. Go to Joshua 24, 9. We're establishing, looking here, this teaching of Balaam and what happened. You saw what happened to Balaam here. Joshua 24, verse 9. Let's go to 2 Peter 2.15. And also this is in light of falling away in steps and where our feet should go and why we should not go in that direction. 2 Peter 2.15 because this is about falling away in steps. 2 Peter 2.15 Second Peter 2.15 Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam the son of Beor who lived, I'm sorry, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. I'm trying to read without glasses. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> sorry. See, the, the way that this teaching of the Nicolaitans and, and Balaam, which, which way it leads. You can see why they're worshiping the creator more than, worshiping the creation more than the creator. A form of dark, uh, darkness, confusion. And what you're saying in all these is that, from the understanding is that most of this was sun worship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Most of this was sun worship, and that's how we gradually, as you say, step by step, we're following man mm -hmm. instead of God. Mm -hmm. Instead of Balaam, he's doing what he said to do. Mm -hmm. And turn to Jude, verse 11. Because as uh, I remember my brother was saying in Sabbath school class about the Nicolaitans and the history behind it. And when I looked it up this morning, what, um, over here. As you read, uh, turn to Jude 11. Gnostics, this is what, um, the Gnostics were, what, uh, Gnosticism, one of the things that John of Revelation had preached against in these last days about the truth. The Gnostics were a sect of philosophers that arose in the first ages of Christianity who pretended they were the only men who had a true knowledge of the Christian religion. They formed for themselves a system of theology agreeable to the philosophy of Pythagoras and Plato to which they accommodated their interpretation of scripture. They held that all natures, intelligible, in intellectual, and material are derived by successive emanations from the infinite fountain of deity. These emanations they called oans. These doctrines were derived from the oriental philosophy. And in short, uh, back there. It's just form of Gnosticism, the doctrines, principles of, or systems of philosophy taught by Gnostics. Just man's in short philosophy or his opinion as we were 
going over last Sabbath school. And that's how we can get into danger by having our own opinion and following man's opinion as to what God says. He is, as we go in Revelation 14, which says, who is, and I'll read there in your hearing, uh, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Now, just in light of that, after reading Revelations 14, 7, who has created the heavens and the earth and the fountains and waters and the sea and all that dwelleth therein, what man can claim that he has created any one of those? But yet still, in their own Gnostic view, will come up with, a, they think, a rational viewpoint as to why you should follow a man. But the evidence shows that he has not created those things. That's why God puts verses of scripture in that place. Mm -hmm. That as the Sabbath will be that main situation that's coming up, that there will be those who are against the Sabbath, that he is the one that's created. Right. That is Sabbath language in that uh, verse that you just quoted. Mm -hmm. It's It's the fourth commandment, it's Sabbath language, that God is the creator. And if we recognize him as the creator, then we have a responsibility to him. And I think that's where man wants to shy away. Why do we have to answer to some unseen God you know, in his mind? We can come up with theories and figure things out. So. <coughs> But we My think, opinion. But we don't think that's going on today. We think it's just peace and safety. But it's not. There are things that are going on, as you were alluding to earlier, the controversial issue of the two speakers. They found out the one speaker was doing lewd things behind the scenes. And, and posted it on the internet. It's posted on the internet. And then here's one who's living the lifestyle of a person that we would say is sane, right. would not do things against the human nature that Romans, Paul talks about in Romans 1. Right. And then what do they do? They turn back to the darkness right? Exactly. to have that person speak. So the, di uh, how do the blind lead the blind. Amen. Into the ditch. <laughs> it's sad, but go ahead. I'm remembering as a little kid, they talked about the devil. The pitchfork and the red long tail and the ears and all this. Stay away from him. Stay away from me. This is the devil. You know, some glory picture of him. Then we come today and we say, and we know that, we still teach that. The devil gonna get you. Parents still say, you know, the devil gonna, they still say that. Trying to frighten you from doing wrong. But yet still, as a little kid, you see parents going and do things that are wrong. Mm. As a little kid, you see, mm -hmm. as a young adult or preteen, you see your parents doing something, or your friends, or their neighbors. And yet, still, we now will worship. And when they say that, it's the opposite. God loves good kids. God loves them. They say, you hear all this. Mm -hmm. Yet, still, we're still going against. We're still following the evil instead of the good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Intelligently, we know it. Mm -hmm. And just in the light of what you were saying, 
in Revelation 2.15, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. And as I was looking also here, uh, a reference I came up, they were doing the things that, as God told them, they, they hate the things that God hates, but they were doing. That one hasn't been read yet, has no. it? That text. Revelations 2? No, Jude. Oh, Jude 11. Jude 11, yes, we were, we're, Jude 11, yes, we were, we were going to go there. We haven't read it. Jude 11. And it just co-signs what was read in Peter. Right. Mm -hmm. Jude 11? Yes. Dathan and Korah. Right. Two. Korah is one, two men. Korah, here you have the in the wood. Moses. Oh, in the time of Moses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. The rebellion. Yes. They See. were also the minister of music. What? He was the minister of music. Oh. oh yeah. and See, we need to look at that. That's what he just pointed out so we can see how we do go after that even today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what, did, what did Cain do? So you have oh, three examples. Question. Three examples. Yes. You have Cain, Louis' brother. Balaam. You have Balaam, who do? was a Carson. Yes. Carson. Cain. Yes, he went against the command of what God said was, was required to offer as a form of worship. And then when I'm saying that, uh -huh. excuse me, when I'm saying what Balaam did, he showed them how to send women into. Pulling him away right. from it. Yes. Right. He was speaking for God. He couldn't say nothing but what God gave him. Mm -hmm. But he still, behind the scenes, showed show him, the king, how he can get them to fall. Mm -hmm. So music. you have. He okay. sold, and music. He sold the brothers. Uh -huh. the mm -hmm. So, in short, you have three representatives here. You have one showing the individual that goes against the commands, you have the ministerial going against, then you have that whole congregational form that went against in rebellion mm. in turn and the, and the ground opened up as well. So um, woe unto them for they have gone in the way. Gone in the way. The falling away. Falling into a wrong way. Not they taking ran, God's ran. way. <laughs> they didn't walk. They ran. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Man, greedy. Bless. <laughs> two fifteen. Uh, read. Let's go to two fifteen. Revelations two fifteen. As I was saying later, uh, in light of what Brother Williams was sharing about children being told by their parents. And the children seeing their parents doing the very things that they tell them not to do. And this is a verse that I was referring to, Revelation 2.15. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. And 2.6. Uh, this is a verse. Revelation 2.6 in the same chapter. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, this is the verse, which I also hate. So hating something is not good enough. And the Nicolaitans, this was their form of doctrine. I got my paper. Can you read verse 16? Yes, go ahead, brother. It says, repent all. Repent, or else I will come against unto thee quickly, or will fight against thee with the sword of my mouth. If we don't change, we're going to be cut up. We're going to be cut up. By his word. By his word. The 
truth, word of truth. Amen. Oh, yes. There were Gnostics who had philosophical views of, or basically just their own opinions. Time of John Revelations, the second century. Under second century. Or uh, I actually under Ephesus, the uh, Church of Ephesus. The first church. Ephesus. In the first church. Yes. They were actually part of the d disciples that had come into the truth after Pentecost. There was one, if I remember his name so. was Nick. Go ahead, brother. Here. I had written a note here. Oh, I wish I had my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I just got it. I looked up a little something on uh, Talk up. I looked up something on the Nicolaitans here. It says the doctrine of the Nicolaitans appears to have been a form of antinomianism. Mm -hmm. The Nicolaitans of the second century seem to have continued and extended the views of the first century, adherence holding to the freedom of the flesh, yes. and teaching that the deeds of the flesh, the deeds of the flesh have no effect on the health of the soul, and consequently no relation to salvation. Definition of antinomian, a believer in the doctrine that faith alone, not obedience to the moral law, is necessary for salvation. Thank you. I have, have more. No, I'm looking for another piece of paper, and I had it right here. Nic Nicolaitans taught the deeds of the flesh do not affect the purity of the soul, and consequently have no bearing on salvation. And that's what Gnosticism. So they're all over the place in this day and age. Yes. So you could, as, as Paul was teaching in Corinth, how 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 is it that? A man could take his father's wife and still be in the church. But you remember, remember the father whose son who took his stepmother's wife, okay, and still be in the church and not be corrected for such man and such behavior. But do you see that today? So they believe that the the soul is pure. But the flesh, they're just separate. No limitation. No limitation. So, yes, but oh, hold that, hold that thought. So, in light of that, it's going to be easy for people to come on in and to accept sun worship, because a lot of them are worshiping the creation more than the Creator right now, anyway. The flesh. Go ahead, bro. Well, we were told that. All the churches, uh, everything that happened in the churches, it's also happening today, right? Mm -hmm. The lessons for us today. Uh, and when we see the Nicolaitans in the first church, uh, that means that we should expect them in the last church as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the word Nicola Nicolaitans comes from Nicholas. Mm -hmm. right? And we know that there is an implication of Saint Nicholas, which is uh, Saint Nicholas. Saint Klaus, mm -hmm. right? But the origin of that uh, name Nicholas, mm -hmm. if you check our concordance, mm -hmm. is the word Laodicea. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. That means that God hated the works of the Laodicea. Because that's the origin of the, the name. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting piece of information that I, I found. Uh, and you can find this in our reports. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Amen. Thanks for that, brother. Today that's in the other church, oh, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Today in other church, in other churches, they think that you can do whatever you want, God loves you and saves you. That's mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Just the yeah. And, yes. You know, when you when you Sorry. I, <laughs> I, I want to facilitate. I got brother, brother Lucas in the back. He, no, 
just wanted to read a... He's going to read. Quote. Okay. This is from Signs of the Times, mm -hmm. February 25th, right. 1897. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she puts this way in the doctrine of the years. She says, Christ consent to die in the sinner's step, in the sinner's step, that man, by a life of obedience, might escape the penalty of the law of God. His death did not make the law of God of, of none effect. It did not explain the law, lest it claims for detract from its sacred dignity. The death of Christ proclaimed the justice of his father's law in publishing the transgressor. In that, he consented to suffer the penalty of the law transgressed himself in order to save all men from its curse. The death of God's beloved son on the cross shows the immutability of the law of God. His death magnifies the law and makes it portable and gives evidence to man of its chain, uh, changeless character from his own device I'm sorry from his own divine lips or heard the word think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets I am not to come to destroy but to fulfill the death of Christ justified the claims of the law but the doctrine is now largely thought that the gospel of Christ has made the law of God of none effect. That by believing, we are released from the necessity of being doers of the word. Mm -hmm. But this is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. There you go. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. Christ so mm -hmm. unsparingly condemned to the church of Ephesus, he says. And then she quotes. Revelation 2, the one we just read. The next paragraph she says, Those who are teaching this doctrine today have much to say in regard to faith and righteousness of Christ. But they pervert the truth and make it serve the cause of error. They declare that we have only to believe on Jesus and that faith is all sufficient. That righteousness of Christ is to be the sinner's credential that this imputed righteousness fulfills the law for us. And we are no under the obligation to obey the law of God. This class claims that Christ came to save sinners and that he has saved them. I am saved. They will repeat over and over again. But, but are they saved while transgressing the law of Jehovah? No. For the garments of Christ's righteousness are not a cloak of iniquity. For iniquity, such teaching is a gross deception. And Christ becomes to these persons a stumbling block as he did to the Jews. To the Jews because they would not receive him as their personal savior. And to these professed, professed believers in Christ because they separate Christ and the law and regard faith as a substitute for obedience. They separate the Father and the Son, the Savior of the world. Virtually, they teach, both by precept and example, that Christ, by his death, <coughs> saves men in their transgression. Amen. And that's the doctrine of Nicolai. Mm -hmm. When you test the law, and we are saved in our sins. Mm -hmm. That's the doctrine of Laodicea. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. the recording says Nicholas means a, a heretic. 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 So that means the Laodicean state is heresy. Yeah. That's what we're teaching in our church. That, that's and, 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 yes. and one of those doctrines that I can think of when i looking at the Nicolaitan that not affect the purity of the soul and consequently have no bearing on salvation is one saved, always saved. Right. That's the teaching right. of the In need Nicolaitans. of nothing. Mm -hmm. In need of nothing. Mm -hmm. I have uh, a, just to bring some right. light on this subject mm -hmm. so you know who Nicholas was, if you turn to Acts 6, Acts 6, when they were choosing the seven deacons and Stephen was chosen, mm -hmm. turn to Acts 6, verse 3. <clears throat> 
Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of holy ghosts and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. And that business was ministering to the widows uh, that were not Jews. Mm -hmm. But we will give ourselves continually mm -hmm. to prayer and to the ministry of the word, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and uh, Procurus, mm -hmm. and uh, Nicander, and Timon, and Permesius, and Nicholas, this is the one we're talking about, mm -hmm. a proselyte of Antioch. Mm -hmm. That's the Nicholas. He went astray, just like those in our fold. Mm -hmm. When they go astray, they draw men to themselves. Mm -hmm. And in my commentaries as I was studying this, this was the teaching that John of Revelations fought against mm -hmm. on this subject matter, because that's where they crept in. And many had gone, as we had, have been talking about, have fallen away. They, oh, well, since you know, we saw I'm all good in my soul, I have no need of nothing as we look at the Laodicean, right. you know. I, I have it all together, but we're not, that's not the case. These are the results, this kind of thinking is the result of the, the, the type of the sermons that you hear in the yes. church. Yes. That's the peace and yes. safety yes. message. Yes. Yes. You, Go ahead. Just two things right quick. The first one, uh, what was that reference again? The brother, signs I'm of afraid. the times. Yes, yes. signs, signs of the times what? February. Twenty-fifth, eighteen ninety-seven. February, okay. Paragraph six. Paragraph, okay. Eighteen, eighteen what? Eighteen ninety-seven. And secondly, um, the last part of uh, the text that Brother Sankey just read, uh, he said, and Nicholas, a proselyte. Well, what was a proselyte? Mm -hmm. They were brought in to. He was. He, he wasn't. He came from Antioch. Right. 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 He wasn't born a Jew. Right. He, he may have been a Grecian or uh, uh, yeah, a proselyte. Uh, what do you call them? Uh, the uh, Gentile right. that was converted. But once uh, some folks are converted, they still hold to their oh, traditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly it's a mirror image. Right. Of, of what's happening of, right now with our church. Now, right? Especially okay. with music. Yes. <laughs> yes, brother. Because it mentioned Cora, and Cora was a minister of music. Who was a minister of music in heaven? Lucifer. Mm -hmm. He created the lives of Saint Nicholas, Santa Claus. It's very serious. <laughs> He's saying, brother Sam. I'm, I'm happy for the learning this morning about the Nicolaites. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to point out that our, what he was talking about the uh, another thing we can learn about. Uh, and dynominism, which is a big uh, theological term. Uh, and dynominism is the exact, uh, is the opposite of legalism. Mm -hmm. Legalism is bad, and dynominism is bad. Mm -hmm. Both of them are bad. Extreme. Mm -hmm. But that's the extreme. Mm -hmm. the, the two teachers, you know, you go legally, legalism, or you go in dynominism. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it's the yeah, mm -hmm. you, you can work your way in heaven, or you don't have to do nothing. Mm -hmm. One or the other. By yes, antinomianism, it's the opposite to the wholeness that God says that we are. We are mm -hmm. whole right. body, and what you, what the body does affects the soul, or the opposite. Mm -hmm. So this is the opposite of of the concept that we were one. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is uh, in opposition. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned wholeness, yes. and when we hear the fullness of Christ, most people only want to hear the love of Christ, mm -hmm. yeah. but not the wrath of God, no. the wrath of Christ. It's too scary. They right. Say. But they have to face it eventually. There is judgment. We don't face it. We better get scared now <laughs> than then. And, uh, um, get scared and to walk in the straight and narrow path. That's yeah. I'm just don't even get scared and say, oh, no, I'm scared. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. I don't want to hear Go ahead, brother. 
Interesting. But if you want to know the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, you go to the university church, you go yeah. to the yes. Church, <laughs> yes. Yes. Go here. Philosophical view. The Bible says that God hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans and the works. Yes. Now, very interesting because depending on the doctrine that you have, Bela. you will have the works the of mm -hmm. that doctrine. Mm -hmm. Drum circles. Mm. Now, um, let me read this quote from the Great Controversy. It's talking about peace and safety. This is... Um, I'll save that for later. I'll save that. I'll save that. Uh, okay, Nicolaitans. Okay, we're going to try to get through. My brother just showed me my time. We're, um, we're going to go forward here. I just asked him. Thank you, brother. <laughs> uh, we labored on that thought there. Now we're going to get to this number fifteen uh, question. What day was especially devoted to somebody? to sun worship, and the answer is the great day dictated to this worship was the first day of the week, Sunday. Sunday, day of the sun. Okay. How early was the tendency to adopt heathen customs manifested on the part of professed church? And question answer here, it was manifested in the apostles' day. And as we had gone over, as one of the, as the brother asked the question, how earlier was that? And instead it shows it was in the second century, during the time of John Revelation, and opposing the, the teachings that was taught by the Nicolaitans, by Nicholas. And, okay. Number 16. Number two. Note number two. Can I have a reader, please? Note, note two? Yes, note two. Note that, one, the great mass of the world in Paul's day were heathen. Two, the greatest universal heathen worship was sun worship. Three, the great and universal day of sun worship was Sunday, besides other monthly and yearly feasts. Four, the Galatian Christians were converted to heathen. Galatians 4 8. Five, in their backsliding, they turned back to the beggarly elements of the world to which they were in bondage before they knew Christ. Verse 9. Six, one great evidence of this was that they returned to observing times and days. <coughs> Seven, the only obvious infer inference is that these days were heathen days and times and would naturally include among them the Sunday. Okay. Amen. See that? See that in that note there? It's an early tendency to adopt human custom manifest on the part of the professed church was manifested in the Apostles' Day. We saw that, the evidence of that. In number 17, in respect to what and by whom was the arrogancy, arrogancy of the mystery of iniquity met manifested. Can I have a reader to, to the answer? The first arrogant claim of which we have record was made by Victor. Victor, Victor, yes, sir. Bishop of Rome, mm -hmm. in behalf of Sunday. Rome had begun to celebrate the Passover or the heathen feast of Easter or Sunday. And Victor, Bishop of Rome, thought it necessary that the is it Aztec? Asiatic. Asiatic Christians should be compelled by laws and decrees to follow the rule adopted by the Western Church. He therefore wrote them an imperious letter, admonishing them to follow the example other Christians in keeping Easter, Easter, to which they replied with spirit, that they would not depart from the holy institution of their ancestors. 
He did therefore, in wrath, excluded them from his communion and from his, that of his church. Excommunicated. Mm -hmm. Because they stood for the right. Mm -hmm. You keep that. Mm -hmm. See how this comes about. But it's through a lot of traditions and man's philosophy. Note the time. It was before um, Constantine. Mm -hmm. And um, like when I was looking this week, at, looking here at Daniel 11, 38 and 39, we're right there. Living that, that philosophical, not the, the prophetic view. And, but in his estate shall he honor the God of forts, forces, or fortresses, and a God of whom his fathers knew not, shall he honor with gold and silver and precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. Now we're, we know, as of a truth, the Pope is coming to this glorious land to speak before the, the senators in the House of Law. And as we see, you know, they've already, they believe they can, they can change times and law, but this is, what, this is what the word is showing us. It's going to take place to bring in that Sunday law. And they're already doing it. It's already on the books. So here, number 18, and thus turning to the word of men instead of the word of God, what did the church do? I'll read the answer. It erected another standard than the word and finally set up creeds and de decrees of councils as rule of faith. We're right there, re uh, repeating that history. That's why it's important to look back at that Daniel 11, go ahead. I just want to mention something that caught my attention. Uh, when we went into Revelation chapter 2, uh, we read the experience of Ephesus, and we saw that Ephesus, they lost the first love. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go through the churches, only at the end you see a church that recovered that first love. Mm -hmm. And that church is Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. which means brotherly love. Mm -hmm. So that first problem you went, you went through all those, those years mm -hmm. and finally Philadelphia, they had the right experience. Mm -hmm. And we were told that we should go back and have the experience of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. That's the, the first thing that was lost, the first love, the first work. Mm -hmm. God is not coming to save Laodicea mm -hmm. or Laodiceans. Mm -hmm. He's coming to save those that have the experience of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But this is a point that's here as we look at the falling away. Mm. In here in verse 2, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Is that not God, long-suffering and merciful, to warn and to pull out? Because the tendency is that they were doing these things, and he wrote it as a warning to call them out, as in Revelation 14. Because as we were saying earlier, there are those who are in, but he's calling them out. This is a warning to call us out, because we have not come to that point. We haven't made it yet. It's not one save, always save. Hmm. You see where we're at? Yes. So, this is a warning that God is telling us that these churches have lived and they are our example. And the history that's repeating itself after those two indignations that brought us all the way down to 1844, the 2520. 
here we are now in this time of Earth's history. And we, we are hearing that the Pope is going to come, when there, that there's no more protesters protesting Catholicism against the evils against that church, what they have done to persecute this, those who were following Christ. That they wanted man worship instead of worshiping the, the creator of heaven and earth through the Lord and Savior Jesus. We want man. That's why they always portray Christ dead on the cross because it's a dead religion. It's not alive. So here, um, by what term in the scriptures is this confusion characterized? Answer Babylon confusion. Uh, Revelation 14.8 is the verse for that. Uh, Revelation 14, 8, can I have a reader? And they are fallen and all the angels saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great sin, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Is that not still happening? It's not over, it's still happening. Number uh, 21, can I have a reader? And your well, To what did the adoption of worldly standard lead? Answer. When worldly standards were erected by the church, she no longer pleaded God's word and power. And therefore she returned to the world to obtain power. Mm -hmm. The deadly one was healed. Uh, number 22. Can I have a reader? When was this union of the church with the state formed? The answer in the reign of uh, Constantine, Constantine, AD 313, 337. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 23. Can I have a reader? The outcome of all this was foretold in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4. To what did this man-made theocracy inevitably lead? To defy man and putting him in the place of God. Deify, sorry. Thank you. Deifying man. To deify man, making him a god, it says. The Pope claims to be in the place of God. And putting, and he is which he is not. And question twenty-five: What did the apostle predict concerning this? Second Thessalonians two, three, and four. Let's go there and read that. Second Thessalonians two, three, and four. Can I have a reader? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Amen. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, how can they not hear when a man says he's in the place of God? 
and not understand that. Blindness. Because you have left your first love. When you leave your first love, your creator who has created this tabernacle, this flesh, from dirt, who has created the heavens and earth and the fountains of waters and the sea and all that dwells therein, and the only one that can create. And a man says that he is in the place of God. And not hear and understand that this man has been changed from time and time and time again. There's only one God. Yes, I'm sorry. It's amazing. It actually, it can be reduced in two words. The battle between visible and invisible. God is invisible. Faith is invisible. Amen. We are trained. God is trying to teach us to look at the invisible Faith. things, the inner. Mm -hmm. And hope and all this craziness for power is to grab everything they see. Mm -hmm. That's the lowest level of thinking. Yes. And we saw, as I hopefully, that um, the falling away were steps. And um, you can write down these verses of scripture. This is a preparatory work starting from Ephesians 6.15 about putting on the, sh having thy feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And the first one is Proverbs 1, 7 through 16. I'm, I'm going to give it to you because we didn't have enough time to read all through them. And this is Proverbs, Proverbs 1, 7 through 16. The, the first one, I'm sorry, is Ephesians 6, 15. And that's about putting on the shoes, shouting that people with preparation of the gospel of peace. <laughs> and Proverbs 1, 7 through 16. And that's in light of walk not in their path, refrain thy feet. And this is about refraining feet. Psalms 119, verses 101 to 104. Job 23, verses 11 through 12. 1 Peter 2, 21 to 25. Psalms 91, 9 through 16. Malachi 4, 1 through 3, and Isaiah 44, 9 to 10. Now, so. What was the Peter? What was the one in Peter? Uh, that was 1 Peter 2, 21 to 25. Before Proverbs, that was Ephesians 6, 15. And I'll read this, Isaiah 44, 9 and 10. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delicable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not nor know that they may be ashamed who hath formed a God or molt or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing. Isaiah 44 verses 9 through 10. And God is, this is beautiful right here in light of uh, one of the questions closing here. Revelations 2. two thirteen. I know thy works where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. God confirms his word by naming the person who was there at that time and who died for that faith. 
in spite of all that other stuff. He held to, you know, makes you, what doctrine was he holding to? Just to study that. You have to go and look at that and see. Was it Balaam? Was it the Nicolaitans? That's what I'm saying. When you go home, that's a step. Because we know where we are right now. Mm -hmm. That's where you got to go home and step. It's not, it's not a question to reply. No, no, just, no. just go. No, something to think on. Just something to think on. Don't answer. As often time the pastor does, it's not to reply or answer. Just, just think on it. Why would you ask yourself that question? When you go home, think on it. Why? If if you concern about where you're going, that's why you would ask yourself, and you do what you say, do go home and study. You say in the other churches, you you go listen to the man, and I heard a good sermon. Uh -huh. I hate studying it. My reason for bringing out this Revelation 2, 13 here was that Jack, the Lord confirmed as we were looking at these two doctrines that were taking place, what was going on in, the church, in this Laodicean church. But he says, Antipas, who was my faithful martyr, faithful martyr, Thou good and faithful servant. So let's close here with prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for your word, for your truth, for your word will last. For heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will not pass away, Lord God. For you not only confirm your word, but you fulfill your word from the beginnings, Lord God that all of the things that the prophets have spoken, you even said, Lord, that you have come and fulfilled those words. For you are that king that was at hand, Lord God, and that you are the king that's coming back, and that you are God, and that you are king of kings and lord of lords. There is none other but you, Lord, who has died for our sins and rose from the grave. What is man that you are mindful of him, as even the psalmist said, Lord God, but yet you are mindful. Your long suffering and merciful, Lord God, and that you desire none to perish, but that all would come unto repentance. So, Father God, help us in these last days to be a people prepared, Lord God, and to have our sheep feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That means that it's going to take some time, Lord God, and it's according to your timetable, Lord. And it's by your mercies that we have not been consumed within our own iniquities, Lord God. Throughout the week you have kept us, Father God. And we are here this Sabbath day to give you the honor and the glory and the praise. And may you be with the pastor within the hour of the message, Lord God, that you may be lifted up in praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.